So children are in a developmental phase of their life. Their cells are growing. The DNA in their, the cells of their body are in a constant, you know, processing and cycling phase. It's cells like that that are a little bit more sensitive to radiation. So it's always a good idea until children are about 16 to 18 years old when they stop, you know, growing for the most part to try to limit the amount of radiation they have. But there has to be some understanding of the benefit of that particular radiation test. Like if someone needs an x-ray for some reason or a CAT scan for some reason and they're a child, you can still do it and the likelihood that it would cause a harmful effect is extremely low. Um, but that does, so that doesn't mean you should abandon the test. It just means you should proceed with caution. Just make sure the patient understands that there might be a very, very slight risk associated with that. Pregnant women, too, you want to limit the amount of x-rays and CAT scans that, that, that pregnant women get also because their fetus is developing. You know, but for the most part, that uterus provides a good barrier to any diagnostic radiation that you might get from an x-ray or a CAT scan or, or any, anything else. Patients oftentimes ask us about their radiation safety, and one of the things that we do as medical professionals is we have radiation badges. The radiation badge is a device that's very, very accurate that we swap out on a monthly basis and we record how much radiation you know, comes to our body from whatever source, from any type of source. And it's an extremely important device to make sure, because we're around radiation so much um, for therapeutic or imaging reasons, that it's important to understand what uh, excess amount of radiation we've had as me medical professionals. And this can tend to offer peace of mind to patients to know that we're going through the process and making sure that there's nothing that is out of the ordinary or there's nothing that's excessive that's being monitored on a regular basis so patients can rest assured that they're not in an environment where there's unnecessary exposure. Well there's been a lot of clinical studies that have done that have been done in a very long-term fashion not necessarily from the government but from large institutions that have looked at the impacts of patients having CAT scans and x-rays over a very long period of time and what they've demonstrated with there, there's really no uh, significant detrimental effect to, to this type of imaging. Uh, at some point, there, the risk factor goes up if you start having imaging very regularly. Like if someone has a bone tumor and you need to monitor it you know, every two or three months, then there might be some associated risk. But in terms of the overall data, when applied to a large population, it's hard to identify a specific risk.